Hey guys, Dennis Wilburn, the Active Trend Trader. I hope you survived the month of April. It did turn out to be quite bloody for the market. So really pleased that the Active Trend Trading Autopilot Trading Service was up nicely, not just for April, but for the year. We're beating the S&P by about 26%. Uh, welcome to today's session of Trade Your Way to Wealth. We've got some really great stuff to be chatting about. Uh, a couple of good stocks that are strong stocks, but I wouldn't necessarily jump right into them. So we're going to cover that in today's video. And also I'm going to cover the six pillars of active trend trading. These are six pillars that you need to have in place to know you have a good, solid system. So uh, before we get started, remember up in that corner, there will be a little drop down that talks about autopilot trading. Uh, you can go look a video, watch a video about it. And so with no further ado, let's jump into this week's session. Here we go. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Dennis Wilborn. I want to welcome you to today's session of, let me take care of one other thing here. There we go. Uh, today's session of the uh, Trade Your Way to Wealth and Financial Freedom, where we're going to be talking about some stock picks and plus some trading tips. Uh, uh, Anil Parikh from the Delaware IBD uh, Meetup Group uh, is joining us uh, as he normally does, and we're glad you're here today. Uh, Anil, I had a great session last night talking. You know, I, I really had a ball talking about trading with uh, the Delaware uh, group last night. Uh, thanks for staying up late and, and letting me present to you. Yeah, you know, that was great. Thank you. And if you're not aware, and if you're not a member of it yet, please go over to the find it, just look it up on online, uh, the IBD Delaware Meetup Group. Uh, Anil puts together one heck of a strong watch list every week called the Delaware Focus List uh, that he gets from his uh, uh, triple screen process. And also, you know, you want to be taking a look at the active trend trading stuff because I put out a list also. Uh, but again, uh, all of them are really good, uh, interesting lists. And the thing I like about working with Anil is I look for places where our list overlap. And oftentimes that points to a really awesome stock that's setting up for a potential move. And so have you seen that, Anil, uh, in looking yeah. at both? Yeah, same thing. I'm looking at yours also. And see where if there is a similarity between the both and then use it. Because in addition to triple screen, I also use the check in screen. Right. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, I have not introduced myself to the check in screen yet, uh, you know, because you, you can't kiss all the babies, you know. Yep. So just a reminder that all the materials we do present are for trading purposes, tra training purposes. Traders should always pay for trade any new method prior to the risk of their own personal um, own personal uh, account, their personal capital. And we're going to get going with this. But first, before I kick into this, I have a, I, I think it's a, a public service announcement, uh, something that has caught my attention. I guess I received some uh, information about it last night, and it's this. The, the uh, FINRA is basically trying to, or potentially evaluating the potential of taking away your ability to trade leverage ETFs, both inverse and, and non-inverse, and potentially ETFs, and who knows how much further it will go. Uh, this was a notice put out by ProShare. Uh, one of our members forwarded it to me last night. I really am you know, very thankful for this. And uh, basically uh, uh, what it is, is they've defined, FINRA has defined these as complex products that basically the average investor slash trader isn't smart enough, read between the lines, smart enough to trade. I disagree with this totally. And the action needed is basically there. They are collecting comments. Uh, the May 9th is when they is the deadline for responding. Here is a website right here called let everyone invest.com backslash or forward slash pro shares. And in that, I will put the link to both this information and also where you can go and make your voice heard. Uh, it's very important. One of the things I like about this 
is it basically indicates, you know, if you're sitting there going, oh, I would write to them, but I don't know what to say. Well, here's some really great points, talking points you can make. Put them in your own words, if you will. But, you know, one, you know, like you, not regulators, should be able to choose the public investment that are right for you and your family. Public investment should be available to all of the public, not just the privileged. That's the element of essence of this uh, this situation. And um, so, you know, please, again, it's you need to get your comments in. This link will be in the comments section on the uh, email that goes out with this video to announce it. And also will be uh, uh, I will put it down in the comment section when I post the YouTube uh, on, post a YouTube on Market Tech Talk. And so that, that's something, again, um, you know, the, the, as, as we continue to see with the new advent of the uh, Ministry of Truth that just was uh, uh, implemented by the administration, kind of really interesting, you know. Um, it's like uh, you can have, a, you know, we can have an opinion, just but make sure it's the right opinion. But back to what we came here to do today, which is, What's going on in the market? Here's where we sit with the um, uh, active trend trading. We are bouncing along above. We're, you know, we're ahead of schedule on hitting our 40%. And right now, my system has taken me almost totally out of um, uh, uh, everything. Here's where we were sitting last week. And we dropped a little bit, but uh, we actually gained because the indexes fell uh, some moving into today. And um, so we're sitting at about 26% uh, above the S&P. Really pleased with that. And uh, if we continue on, on this pace, that'll make 11 out of 10 years where we had double digit uh, um, gains above the S&P. So that I'm really pleased with that. And so let's take a look at what the, the stock market, what the uh, indexes are telling us. And Anil, I came out and made a very bold statement a couple of days ago that I am basically, and this was came out on my YouTube channel on Wednesday uh, for the video on the radar. And I was also posted over the active trend trading site. And one of the things I stipulated was I was somewhat, I am more pessimistic today about where this market's going than I was a week ago. And part of the reason for that is because I've taken a look at what's happening on a longer term chart. Now, this is the spiders. And you can see on a daily basis, we have rolled over. Um, we had a cross a long time ago. Here's the death cross right here, where the 50 crosses below the uh, 200. Oftentimes, when that happens, you get a rebound and you go back into an uptrend. However, on this one, as we can see, our uptrend projections fail. Where do they fail at? We came up, pulled back to what was potentially a higher low, get right back up into where, right into the 200-day moving average, and then rip to the downside, back to past support. We're at a critical junction with the market. If this level does not hold, we are going, you know, of course, we are going down. That seems like an obvious thing to say, but how far might we go? That's one of the other questions we can ask. And if we grab just a Fibonacci real quick, let's just do a simple Fibonacci uh, uh, extension. Go from this low here, back up to the high for the year. A 100% move would take us down to three, uh, 341. Look over here to your left. That coincides with a congestion or consolidation zone where we broke out of before. So that's a solid level. The other level is right here at the uh, 367 level. Look to your left. Yeah, you had a little bit of congestion there. And then here's another level here. This one is a strong level at the 391 le uh, 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 price level. And that's where we could settle there uh, and get a bounce. The mar and as we see, what's going on here with the TSI? TSI continues to fall. We have a little bit of a bullish on a weekly chart, a bullish uh, or a positive divergence, which could mean we could get a bounce at any time. We've got a two-line cluster going here on the daily, 
And we have, in fact, made the turn with TSI to head back up. However, it's starting to squeeze down the other side. Uh, we are still working off of one reversal signal, a bullish Harami right here uh, from Wednesday on the S&P. Let me get rid of this really quick. And I want to show you why I am at some, you know, I'm, again, more pessimistic than I was previously. And part of it has to do with this long-term momentum is shifting to the downside. We've had a cry, and this is the monthly chart here. And since we're closing on the end of April, the monthly chart is something you need to be taking a look at. And the first four months of the year, we have been closing down. We close below this level there. That's the 410 level. We could be in for a slippery ride all the way down to about 350 or even lower. Um, if you throw on a Fibonacci on this chart, as you can see, that would be the 50% retracement of this significant move from the COVID bear market to the recent high. 50% would take us to right there. Look to your left. Does that correspond to a breakout area? Sure does. Uh, bup, bup, bup. How much of a, a, a uh, drawdown would that be? Well, we just want to go back in here and just grab hold of that. And that would equal a 20, only a 27% move back down to the downside. Kind of interesting. Um, the other thing that I am very interested in this particular chart is two things. One, MACD is rolled over. Market forecast is rolling over. If we cross this uh, line right here, then I think we're going to have an acceleration to the downside. And then what else do I have going on here? The, the longer term TSI still pointing down. I'm not at a level of support where it might bounce. I have zero, um, zero uh, long-term monthly um, candlesticks that are saying, hey, I want to reverse here. So that's what I've got going on. That's why I'm sitting there going, hmm, this could do a more significant drop than we may have been anticipating. So I'm a, a, now it doesn't mean I'm not going to take bullish trades. And excuse me for going into this in such great detail, but it doesn't mean I'm going to not take bullish trades, but it means I'm going to be very cautious with the bullish trades that I do take. And so that means keeping tighter stops and maybe reducing my expectations, taking profits at 7% rather than 10% on the initial go. So that's what we've got going on there. Let's go ahead and jump over to, um, now let's go. So again, I encourage you to look at all the stocks, you know, the stock you're watching on your watch list, and just take a look at it this week to see what it looks like on that longer term monthly charts. As we can see, the, the NASDAQ, the Q is right at a support level. If it breaks the support level, where's it going? It's going down, probably about to the 270 level. Uh, looks like a you know, potential positive move to the downside. Again, market forecast, giving us a two line cluster, which means that sometime within one to four, in this case, days, we could get a reversal signal. We are working off of a uh, inverted hammer right here or a, a tombstone doji at the end of a downtrend. And so we could get a bounce. But where did it bounce to? Right, right into the eight-day moving average, and it's failing there. So if we blow through the bottom of this, it'd be a good time to be looking at either a inverse ETF, that's SQQQ, or some puts on the Qs or puts on TQQQ. IWM. Similar, IWM has broken its lower support zone here. And where's it going to go from here? Uh, I'm looking with a breakage there, probably looking at a pullback 173.58 all the way down to this low here, which is 168.34. Those are my downside targets. Um, so that's what I, Neil, that's what I'm looking at. What are your what are your thoughts? Am, am I being too pessimistic? 
No, I think uh, you're about right because I'm looking at my charts right now and on S&P 500, NASDAQ, Dow, IWM, Russell 3000, everything gave a weekly sell signal mm. late January and early February, and that has not gone away. It's, and this has not happened. This is the first weekly sell signal on all indices since the COVID turnaround. Wow. Wow. So, so you're not, so the stocks you're looking at going in on, then you're just looking at doing a nibble. That's right. Okay. And select only the best of the best. Only the best of the best. I like that. Yeah. So does anybody have any questions? Uh, let me open it up just real quick for any quick questions that you might want to ask. You can either come off mute and, and uh, ask it or just type it in the chat box as we're going to go over. And since Steve's not here, Anil, I'm going to cover his stocks first. And we're going to go these, through these really quick, but you're going to get a bonus today, folks. You're going to get multiple stocks. And one of the ones that Steve has is a net. In a A N E T, uh, Arista Networks. Um, one of the things it has it is it has earnings on Monday, so I would not buy this today. I would wait until after earnings. Uh, Steve also said uh, that he would be waiting for uh, a you know a little bit more strength on the indexes. This is looking pretty good. It's right at the two hundred day moving average. Uh, it has had a complete round trip of this move up, and uh, uh, we had a bounce. It looks a lot like a lot of the other stocks and, uh, and indexes that we've been watching. So uh, I wouldn't do anything with this until after it reports earnings. And because as we see, uh, with the reporting of earnings, it can go any way it possibly, you know, a lot of different ways. Steve also had Lily. Now, this is kind of interesting on Lilly. Lilly did report out on the uh, 28th, and it's holding up fairly well. So I could jump, I could get behind Lilly to possibly pick it up at the eight-day moving average or somewhere in the wick for a expected move back up to the 312 level. And you could do that with an option. Yeah, it's looking pretty good also on the uh, day weekly chart. Are you Is Lilly on your uh, list there, Anil? Uh, not this time, but Lily, one of the guy in Connecticut who keeps up with that price of beta ratio, he rated Lily very high uh, this week. Okay, yeah, I Lily looks pretty good. Matter of fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna circle that one so I can circle back around to it, and then um, we do have. And then he also, Steve said he's watching Dar. Uh, Dar to me looks like it's heading down some to the lower. It may just go back here and retest the lower level, but very interesting observation here. See how it price action pushed all the way up. This was not a bullish reversal signal, although it was a bullish, bullish candle. Where do prices go? Right to the 820 combo. Then as reverse back down and the, you know, telling us that guess what? The bears are in control and going to be pushing the prices down. So that's uh, that's the good, bad, and ugly of Steve's picks. Uh, Lily looks really good. And then, Anil, here's your pick. Merck. This, is, this is Merck, right? Yep, it's MRK, Merck. It's very strong in fundamentals uh, in MarketSmith. And I had a weekly triple screen buy signal. It actually came on March the 21st. And March the I, I was waiting for the earnings to go over and the earnings are over. So it's looking good right now. Okay. So are you in it now? Do, have you actually entered it? No, I've not entered it yet. I okay. I want to enter it today. Okay. Yeah, that looks like it's getting ready to uh, to uh, to break out. Nice strong move here. This is a buying. Look at the volume coming in after earnings, which bought it all the way up. And as long as it doesn't violate the eight day moving average, looks like a pretty good pick. And I think Merck also has, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Merck has 
uh, probably weekly options on it. And it does. And so it gives you a lot of different opportunities to be able to trade Merck. And um, so I like that. So yeah, that, that looks pretty good. I mean, this little breakaway right here is really impressive. And pay, this is something to pay attention to, folks, is that look at Merck, Lilly. These are kind of like core um, stand, you know, core um, uh, or, or staple kind of, of companies, you know, drug companies and all that kind of stuff. So very interesting how that's working out. So here's my picks. You ready? Here we go. BRTX. If you want to go BR, VRTX had a breakaway from the uh, uh, a hammer candle. TSI has worked up to the upside and we had a gap and go. My issue with the gap and go right now is it gapped up to where it, it opened up where it's at about right now. And it pushed up here to about the 280 and then pushed back down. I'm good by, if as long as I stay above the eight day moving average going into the close today, I would look at potentially taking a half position, recognizing I have earnings coming up on 5.5 after the market closed, that's next Thursday. So it would be a short time hold for that. What did you have on Merck's, Barry? So BRTX, uh, again, we traded this earlier this year. We got in down here about the 234 and actually took profits along the way until it hit its high. And then it reversed and dropped back down. But it looks like it may be getting ready for a little bit of a uh, yeah, go ahead and ask your, your question, uh, 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 Merck. You can either unmute yourself or just ask it in the chat box. You know, Anil, uh, Barry has a question about Merck. Yeah, go ahead. Is it in the chat box? And no, not yet. Yeah, okay. Oh, question above. I'm sorry. Yes, it is. Anil, here we go. If it Closes in the bottom third of the candle, would you wait for a dip? Uh, according to my system, I probably would not. It's just a good buy right here. And the earnings have gone by and it has a weekly signals. And weekly signal usually don't go away easily. So I'm ready to go. Yeah. And one of the things to, to also address Barry's question is I'm sitting there and I take a real quick look at where is it, where's the closest, uh, you know, past uh, bullet, uh, uh, swing low. It's right there. It's about 5.75% away. So to be able to work that, you could actually move up your stop loss just slightly below yesterday's candlestick. Slightly below that, and you would be able to have a stop loss of about 4%. Yeah. So, I usually go with about 5%. Okay. Excellent. So let's see. VRTX we talked about. Uh, here's one that is already reported out. Tech. Now, this is either one of two things. We've reported earnings. We bounced up. We uh, blew uh, through the... Uh, through the eight-day moving average, but look what's happening. It is hitting the 20-day uh, moving average. And so what we may be looking at with, and this is where this kind of pattern is very common when you're getting a topping type process going on, potential topping type process. Got a big bearish engulfing from last week. And what has happened? We've Pulled down to a strong moving average. That's at 100. Roll back up. And this rally attempt appears to be failing. So I, this gives me, uh, I would not take a trade in tech if I didn't hold above the 20-day uh, the moving average because it tried, but now it's selling off. You can see that long candlestick, uh, long wick right there. Next, in the last one, we're giving you a lot of really good stuff today, guys, uh, and, and ladies and gentlemen. Zim. 
Now, I was like in Zoom a lot earlier today, but it's working off. Of, and this is happening a lot. I mean, this is the classic type move of I've moved right back up into the 20-day moving average. Now it looks like I'm reversing, bearish engulfing yesterday. And so again, earlier in the day, even just an hour ago, this was looking very positive for a potential trade to the upside and a earnings run right here on the uh, 511. So what I would be looking at doing here is I'm not going to necessarily short this, but I'm going to see what happens, see if I pull back down into this and then reestablish because I already broke out the downtrend line, but I'll just reestablish what I want to do from there. So that's what we've got going on. What do you think? We've covered a lot of stocks and Neil, what, which one, which one, okay, I know you like, uh, Merck, did you like any of the uh, Vertex, Tech, or Zim? Yeah, Vertex looks all right. Zim, actually, I have a sell signal on it on the weekly chart uh, today. Okay. So that does not look good. Okay. And, and that's really interesting, uh, guys, because on Zim, on, on the weekly chart, it's actually showing us a bullish engulfing. But that sell signal could, you know, if it fail, falls below that purple line there, which is the 200-day moving average or the 40-week moving average, that would be a, an indication to me also that this is failing. So that's what we've got going on. Hey, thanks, Neil. I think we covered a, so I think we covered some good stuff. So hey, just here, here's the the tech tip for today. One, six pillars of trend trading. Write out your plan. I encourage you to do that. And when you're writing out your plan this weekend, getting ready to go into the, you know, because we are 80 days into the trading campaign for 2022, make sure you include these items. One, pillar one, define what to trade. In other words, the stocks and the ETFs that you're going to trade and what makes them good ones. Don't trade junk. You need to, you basically control that going in. Number two, objectively, objectively define when and where to enter. Pillar three, objectively define when and where to exit. And that includes conditional orders on your stop losses or trailing stops. Pillar four, what strategy you're going to use? You're going to you're going to use a buy buy option strategies, uh, uh, you know, or a stock strategy. Define it up front and get it written down. It'll help you plan more later. The number uh, uh, five pillar five: calculate and define expectations. You should know if you're going to invest one dollar. Uh, what is the the you know what is the one potential or probability you're going to be able to return a positive number and what that positive number is. So if you're investing $1 to make $2, that's a two to one uh, rate. And then expectations, I encourage you to go over to Investopedia and I'll talk you through the calculations on how to figure out expectations for your trades. And last but not least, find a mentor. Find a mentor, even if it's somebody just out of a book. If you like Mark Minovini, Go get some of his books and read them. If you like uh, Dr. Elder, get some of his books and read them. If you like Mark Douglas, you know, do that. Uh, if you like Anil, go to his group. Uh, if you like me, go to my group, you know, whatever. But find a mentor who you can learn from, who will walk you through how to basically, you know, help you get your uh, foundation for trading set up. So Autopilot Service puts a check mark in each and every one of these boxes. So... Last but not least, learn how to trade. Learning how to trade is one, learn what to wait for. And then step number two, develop the discipline to actually wait. So that basically covers for today. Um, again, you know, uh, if you struggle with this, how to trade for wealth and building, you may want to check out the autopilot trading. It's in a link that'll be here on YouTube. And also uh, you can find it on the website. Uh, the Active Trend Trading website. And there's a, I'll leave that uh, QR code up a little bit. You can take a snapshot of that with your phone when you watch the replay. So Anil, thank you, my friend. I think we covered a lot of good stuff today. Yes, we did. Thank you. And so, okay, everybody, that's it for today. Uh, we just want to say one, aloha, trade well, prosper, and mahalo, and God bless. 
And so we'll get ready for next week. And again, don't be in a hurry to jump back in the market. You know, the best trade in the, of, of the year will come around about every two weeks. So be patient. Aloha, Anil. Thank you. God bless everybody. Thank you.